The Fantasy Six-Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. And A.J. Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. <laughs> Mouthful. Right, right. Welcome back to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of Fantasy Six Pack dot net. With me as usual, AJ Abagarth. What's up, man? What up? How goes it? <laughs> Didn't know what I asked you. Uh, I'm good. Uh, small funny story. I uh, met up with Jonathan Chan of Fantasy Six Pack tonight. Had a couple beers with him before the show, so I'm feeling good. Uh, dude drove down from Canada. He's on his way to Duke University to go watch a basketball game this weekend. And uh, this happened to be kind of his halfway point. A little more than halfway point. But, uh, you know, he reached out to me and, and wanted to grab a beer. Was hoping he'd be able to join us, but, you know, the schedules didn't work out. It's unfortunate. But uh, yeah. it's good to meet him in person. You know, I, don't get, I don't get to meet a lot of our writers in person except for you because you live nearby. And, we're, you know, we were friends before this anyway. But uh, it's good to meet these guys, man. I, I really wish I could meet more of them. Yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, I'm pretty disappointed I wasn't able to catch up as well, but uh, I did talk to him on on Slack there, so we might try to set something up Sunday when he's on his way back through. So, yeah, man, absolutely, you should. He's a good guy, man. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, pitchers and catchers report in the next couple of days for for all the teams. So that's exciting, and uh, so fantasy baseball is right around the corner, and and with that, you know, we got all the drafts, you know. They're coming soon. They're coming hot. And, you know, we're all worried about, you know, who's going to be what. And then you look at all these prospects, right? And that's where we're going tonight. So we've got <clears throat> all these prospect talk. And and to help us out with that, we got Chris Blessing from uh, from Baseball HQ to help us out with that. Uh, Chris, you there? Yeah, man. What's up? Uh, not too much, man. So, I know you're feeling a little under the weather. I'm not sure if you're in for it, but I waited for the beer of the week because usually you're all about it. I'm not sure if you are tonight, though. I, I, I like well, we can do it. We're gonna do it now, anyway. But all uh, right, you don't you don't have to, but because I know you're not feeling super hot, but uh, we'll we'll, we'll do this. Mm, all right, I'm, I'm good. Beer. I'm, I'm already drinking. <laughs> Sounds good, man. All right, so. We'll, we'll, we'll let you kick it off, man. As the guest, go ahead and, and tell us what you are drinking tonight. All right, I have two beers tonight. Uh, right now I'm drinking Boulevard's Jam Band. All right. It's a berry ale uh, left over from my Super Bowl party. Uh, Boulevard's from Kansas City, so we had that at our Super Bowl party. And then I have a 21st Amendment uh, Tasty IPA, and that's from San Francisco. So I'm nice. drinking the winning, winning brewery first uh, uh, tonight. All nice, right. yeah, yeah. I, I've definitely divulged into some Boulevard action uh, over the years. Always good beers, every one I've had at least. So solid choice. I actually almost bought some Twenty First Amendment myself tonight. So went with a went with something a little different though. It's uh, Six Point Brewery. Um, it is uh, another one of their Infinite Loop IPA series beers. This one is called Puff Puff. Uh, it is a 9.8% can of uh, double dry hopped cloudy IPA or double IPA. So I'm just getting ready to crack this bitch open. Oh, yeah. All right. This tastes like. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. All right. Good stuff, man. Um, so. I am drinking a a DC bra joint resolution, so to to go with your uh your hop hop, um, and puff puff. Uh, puff puff. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> puff so, puff gear. So yeah, so joint resolution <laughs> kind of mixes with that. Anyway, it's a hazy India pale ale. Um, only five point five percent, so it's a little lower end. But since I've been divulging before the show, I figured I'd keep it a little low key. Um, but it's, <laughs> do you want me to like pass out in the middle of the show? That'd be all right. Right. You know, nobody will, pa- nobody will stop the show. It'll go on forever. 
That's fine. We'll eventually just hang our stuff up. Yeah. The cameras off. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of editing your, tomorrow. To your devices, literally. <laughs> Uh, no, it's it's solid though. It's not you know it's it's kind of a mediocre IPA in my opinion. You know, three and a half ish. You know, um, but but it's solid. It's something I would drink again for sure. But um, nothing top notch like I've had recently. So good stuff, man. All right, let's get into all of this and uh, let's let's pull all this up. I'm missing all the I slides. Catch back up with slides. I know, yeah. Oh, you messed me up, man. You changed all the colors. I was like, am I on uh, yeah. the wrong slide? Uh, okay. Yeah, well, I had I had some brightness going on with this new monitor that it's I cool, have. Man. So I, I was just making sure I up. wasn't like see, looking at the wrong slide here for a second. Oh, I'm screwing everything up. I know I am. Okay, anyway. All right, Chris. So let, let's start here with the top guys, man. Like, If you look at all the prospect ranking lists, you see Joe Adele and Luis Robert at the top, right? You know, yeah, in the last couple of years, we've seen Acuna, you know, all these like Eloy Jimenez, like all these top notch dudes, and they've performed, um, and and lived up to all the hype. Can these guys do the same, or are we kind of fooling ourselves into thinking like, look, they're just gonna repeat what everybody else did? We've been so spoiled. We've been spoiled for years. For the last three years, every rookie. Uh, big time rookie, except I guess Vlad uh, Guerrero has really kind of um, hit the ground running. I mean, and Vlad was still decent, if not yeah. if not good for a rookie. Um, I have serious question marks about both of these players. Uh, I, I've had a long history with Luis uh, Robert uh, the last two seasons. Uh, I've I've gotten a lot of uh, looks at him. Uh, I have a big concern about his ability to recognize spin. Uh, I think that he has such a good hand-eye coordination that he is able to find barrel on pitches in the minor leagues that are maybe not the most desirable pitches uh, to swing at. Uh, My issue is with him against advanced competition. I just don't see those steps, those things uh, showing up. So in other words... To me, Luis Robert Robert is a prospect who's going to hit a lot of home runs and he's going to steal a lot of bases. He might not be the batting average guy that people um, may peg him to be. Uh, and from the get-go, his, his biggest attribute right now is his speed. And, uh, you know, given that he probably will see regular playing time at least 75% of the season, uh, we can probably say that he'll – He'll steal at least 20, 25 bases and and probably hit 20-plus home runs. Uh, I think Eloy, when he came aboard, he struggled a little with the breaking ball, and then he kind of, you know, he figured things out pretty quickly. I think Robert is going to be a little slower than Eloy, at, you know, as a comparable with the same team. As for Joe Adele, Joe Adele strikes out a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much so that I just don't buy – him being up before July, August. And I, I I know what people are are saying, all that kind of stuff, but let's look at it. Last season, he missed a good portion of development in double A due to uh, leg injuries that were suffered in spring training. And then when he got to double A, he, he, he did well. Um, then he got sent out to triple A and forgot to hit the ball in the air. Mm-hmm. and missed a lot of pitches and that's not a guy that's ready um so i have a really hard time believing that he's going to have anywhere above five dollars worth of value um in 2020 long term i still like him as long as the angels don't rush him and right now i feel like he's been rushed a bit I mean, one thing, like, not just the strikeout rate, and you uh, you and I were talking a little bit before the show about that strikeout rate that kind of alarmed me, too. I also worry that the fact that, like, the Angels were actively going out and seeking for another outfielder. And I wonder if they're going to keep doing that so that they can push back on Joe Adele coming up. And, you know, everybody who's taken him, you know, yeah, it's late in the draft, so what's it really going to cost you? But, you know, 
you're you're still kind of banking on him as being that you know that sleeper you know prospect guy you know you might sit on him for a month and he's going to come up and be a rock star. I'm not sold on it honestly, and it sounds like you're the same. Yeah, I'm not sold on him, and I think that I think that people are putting too much expectation on him for 2020. <clears throat> Likeable kid, um, and it, it just seems to me that uh, when we like prospects like Joe Adele. And, a guy that struggled who's now with San Diego, Taylor Trammell. Um, our expectations is like, ah, they're gonna they're gonna do it. They're good guys, they're w- whatever kind of thing. But like it comes down to hitting the ball. And right. is he gonna be consistently able to hit the ball to succeed in the major leagues in two thousand twenty? I just don't think he is. Yeah, you, you gotta wonder if like he'll be you know, guess his batting average in the minors was good, probably just because he's just a a you know yeah, he swings and misses a lot, but when he hits the ball, like you said, yeah. he hits it and hits it, right? Like it's just going out of the park or it's just I mean, a, it's he just hits a rocket. it on the screws every time. Yeah, so every time. He, but he's not going to do that in the majors. So, yeah, yeah. it's it's definitely it's definitely interesting. Uh That's cuz the balls right. are full of juice, not screws. <laughs> <laughs> Too all right. Uh, all right, let's 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 move on here. To, so we're going to rip through the rest of these by position. All right. I ask you a couple questions. You know, they're, they're player-based questions mostly. Um, start off here with catcher. So not a lot to talk about, honestly. You know, un- unless you've got something to say that, that I don't – that I can't think of, and you know way more than I do about these guys, so feel free to just, like, chime in with other players that I'm not even thinking about. But, you know, <laughs> Adley Rush- Rushman, I think it's his name. Uh, yeah. Bat, even though I'm an Orioles fan, I can't pronounce his name. And Joey Bart, right? They are top class of the catchers, right? They are. Um, Joey Bart, I think, is coming up this year. Is what everybody's saying. Uh, Rushman is, is probably next year. You know, I want to ask you, who is the better fantasy prospect long term? Oh, long term, it's easily uh, Adlai uh, Rushman, switch hitter. Um, makes good contact from both sides of the plate, has the same sort of power that Bart has, uh, game power. Um, I mean, he's the hitter of the two. And hitters tend to do better, especially if they're catchers. Uh, uh, If you have a high contact rate, you're going to succeed. So, like, the great thing with him was, like, he he went into last year with uh, another prospect that we'll probably talk about a little later. Andrew Vaughn is, like, the number one dude and that was going into the season somehow rushman got so much better um it was kind of amazing to see the first weekend every scouting contact that i had was like oh my god this guy is out of sight for a catcher so he's the long-term option i know you mentioned bart possibly coming up this season i can see it late um i don't you know given the giant situation in the um in the standings and Bart's injury history of, of late, you know, catchers get, get nicked up very easily because of their demands of their position. Uh, I just don't believe he's going to have much 2020 impact. If you're looking for 2020 impact with a catcher, you might go with the uh, Oakland athletics, Sean Murphy, who has the uh, same defensive chops as Bart <laughs> and Rushman. Um, but like he was in the major leagues last year and, then has shown that the ball, that juice ball with no screws in it, uh, he likes that <laughs> ball and he will drive it out of the ballpark. So, um, you know, he's kind of like a five, six dollar grab, but like for a catcher, five, six dollars is, you know, we're talking about top 15 catcher at this point. That's a solid, uh, solid bat to, uh, to have on there for sure, because it's, a weak position as it is. We always yeah. talk about that. Um, I mean, it's it's the tight end of fantasy baseball. And, you know, to, to be able to get a guy, obviously, I feel like both of these two are, are definitely more dynasty stashes at this point. But, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I mean, you're, you're, you like them. They're, they're going to be good. And I, I, I definitely like that the, uh, that the O's are bringing Rushman in here. Um, I do so. love your uh, I, I do love your comp to Sean Murphy. I have him at a dynasty league and picked him up super late last year in the middle of in the middle of the year. Uh, you know, just before he came up, 
I had Wilson. I have Wilson Ramos too, and could keep him for like a round twenty-three pick. But I'm tempted to just, just like toss Ramos aside and just keep Murphy for round forty. So. Well, I mean, it depends upon your, um, you know, essentially your um, composite of your roster. I mean, Ramos is going to hit for average. You're pretty much guaranteed that. Well, so we're a points league, and ah. and it's also like my team is my team's won. <laughs> My my team has won three of the three of the three of the first four years of the league, so my team's stacked, um, and still they're is. Kick you out. Uh, they're 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 trying. They try. <laughs> um, they've also tried to like re we've like reworked the points just slightly to like not make it as favorable for my team, and it still didn't work last year. So um, it was my idea, actually. I was the one who reworked the points and was like, here, guys. Okay, this- guys, I'm tired of kicking your asses every year, so let's make my team worse It was more like everybody was complaining. give you an advantage. It was more like everybody was complaining, so I decided to like – and I didn't want – I don't – yeah, I wanted to even it out because it was actually silly, like the way the points were. Anyway, long story. Uh, so anyway, I don't know, like – I like Sean Murphy a lot, and what's funny is like I can't trade him for zero. I was like, guys, I'll give you, I'll give you him like for something else. Like, just give me something back. And they were like, oh, I don't want catchers. And I'm like, yeah, you guys don't have any idea wants. who Sean Murphy is, do All you? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. I'll keep him for around forty pick. Like, I'm actually gonna probably keep two catchers this year. Just okay. Yeah, I mean, you're you're literally the top hat to Sean Murphy being. Mr. Peanut, like you were that on his nuts. It's sure. ridiculous. So anyway, all right, moving on first base. Um, so, Chris, what, what kind of impact can and or will Evan White and Ryan Mountcastle have on the 2020 season? These are the well, two guys that we're highlighting here. Yeah, so Evan White is going to be the starting first baseman for all intents and purposes for the Seattle Mariners. So, um, I, I see him more as like a ten to twelve dollar grab at a position that is pretty strong. So to me, in, in, unless you're in like a twenty leaguer, uh, a guy like White probably doesn't have much uh, much value to you other than maybe a reserve or or a replacement to a hurt first baseman or something like that. Or if you're looking for average, because I think that's the one thing that Evan White's mm-hmm. going to bring, is he's going to bring a consistent, solid average. He might be uh, Yuli Gori- Goriel's uh, replacement now that Goriel likes the, the juice ball and is hitting home runs. You know, you've yeah. got that one corner infielder that, like, you kind of cut, you kind of hold on to on your roster, you know, when your average is kind of, you know, taking a, taking a junk. Um, and like that, that's kind of where I see him fitting. Like I would not um, invest much capital in him, <laughs> and I say this owning him in most of my dynasty. Decks. <laughs> yes. Um, but like I that's too, too. Is. I wonder why I yeah. do because I ask you for my advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Um, and then as I like, I like him though. <laughs> yeah, and and for for Mount Castle, um, you know, this is this is like the Orioles' new type of guy. They like to get these shortstops that obviously aren't going to ever play shortstop. They tried him at third base, and he obviously wasn't going to play third base. And now he's at first base, and he's in his natural uh, – probably what it should have been his natural position to start with. Um, but uh, I don't know what the Orioles' plan is with him with playing time. Do you guys know that? Have you guys guessed from what – what I mean, seen? I'm going to hold back as fat as as long as possible with all of these guys. Honestly, like they're yeah. not going to bring these guys up. They're bringing up the guys like DJ Stewart, who are just kind of like whatever guys, right? Like they could be expendable. I I don't think they're worried about you know. I think they're waiting on all these pitchers, Mount Castles, you know, et cetera, to to bring these guys up. That's just my opinion. Like everything I read from all the beat writers and and um, you know the Dan Connellys that. It, at the athletic and et cetera. Like it's just, it's a waiting game with all of this. They're, they they yeah. kind of want to bring all of them at the same time. Kind of like what the GM did in Houston and it worked, right? Like you, you, you bring it up really clumped together mm-hmm. in a short period of time. You bring them all in at the same time, right? Within like a two year period, like poof, year, go, <laughs> go win the world series. And yeah, I, so I, 
Yeah, I don't Here's know what the signs. To do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. I don't know what to do with Mount Castle. Like, I don't think I'm going anywhere near mid drafts, honestly. Um, if he gets called up, sure, I'd, yeah, I'd go I, take a stab at him. Too. Um, but because I, mean, I think he's talented, but yeah, this year I'm not really counting on him being much of anything. Yeah. yeah, and he 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 took to coaching really well. So, uh, you know, we had a philosophy change with the Baltimore Orioles uh, when when the new GM came in, and we're going to see more of that this year as well. Um, they became they went from the least uh, analytic and technology team to one of the most analytic, mm-hmm. you know, tech, tech the you know technologically desperately sound needed it. So, uh, and Mount yeah. Mount Castle was one of the guys that that really took to it and took to swing trajectory and getting under the ball while not really kind of losing uh, the essence of the hitter that he was. So I like him. I think that he's a solid first base prospect and, you know, there's potential if you squint your high eyes that he'd be a top 10 um, type of uh, first baseman in the future. But, you know, he's a top 15 guy at least. And uh, I, I really do like him. I want to so, backtrack just slightly here. Sorry, AJ um, on Evan white. And, you know, I'm looking at his numbers a little more and you're kind of saying that like average is his big strong suit. And when you say that about a first baseman, I think Eric Hosmer, 100%. (laughs) I mean, is he basically like Eric Hosmer light or or could he turn into Eric Hosmer? I think he'll hit the ball in the air more than Eric Hosmer uh, ever did. I mean, Eric Hosmer had a couple good seasons with home runs, but I I think overall, like it's been not what people really thought it was going to be. Yeah. Uh, I mean... I, I and and this is sad. I've never been like the big guy on him. I, I've been waiting for, uh, you know, we fall in love too much with on base percentage in the minor leagues, <laughs> and I think that like he's a guy that people are falling way in love with. The thing I like most about him is his contact rate. He makes contact, you know, higher than seventy percent. Um, you know probably even higher than that. I don't have it in front of me. I know you have it on the screen, but my math's not working that fast today. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, he's a, he's a solid player who's, who's going to have a solid career. Uh, uh, his defense will help him with war, but that doesn't really help him in anything but like score sheet. So. Yeah. I mean, we don't score points in fantasy for defense. Unfortunately, it would, not it would oh. change. <laughs> it would change drafting quite a bit. Uh, so we we have to stay in the first base here and, and have to ask you about Mr. Seth Beer. I mean, this is the fantasy six pack show after all, and uh, you're one of our our favorite guests in general, but also favorite beer guests because uh, I I feel like you enjoy beer as much as we do. Um, yeah. So. The problem I've heard with him is his defense, though. Um, Nice little segue there. So, you know, they're they're not really sure where he's going to play yet. I mean, what have you been hearing about about Mr. Beer here? All right. Well, first off, uh, we'll just uh, get through his defense. This this is the player we're spending the most time on tonight. I hope you guys know that, right? (laughs) All right. I'll Um, sit back. Because because he's Seth Beer. Why why not? Um, He he will be mentioned at every position, aside from catcher, since we missed him there. That's good. Really, he's... uh, (laughs) If we had a DH, do we need a drink every time we National mention his League, name? <laughs> Seth yeah, Beer would be our DH. Yeah, he would be our DH. Yep. Uh, at the Arizona Fall League, um, there's this pop up. I'm I'm sitting with a few prospect writers in, in the scout section. Uh, Eric Cross uh, from Fan Tracks and and Matt Thompson from Prospect Live. And I forget who I was talking to. I, you know, something I might not have been with them. I might have been just with Jason Collette and Todd Zola. Um, name dropping. All right, cool. I'm name dropping a lot of things. <laughs> like, you know, I have a lot of two, good friends. Two here. straight shows, three straight shows on this. Yeah, right. I know. What, what's going <laughs> on here? Back, we, 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 got, uh, we, don't, we, you know, we don't get the name drop like this. I just yeah. get to talk but to anyway, you. But anyway, <laughs> pop up first base, and every first baseman should catch this ball. Seth Beer didn't get to it. Okay, and it dropped in foul territory and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Seth Beer in left field is supposedly worse than that. So um, the the Diamondbacks are right to gamble that he's eventually going to be their DH. Um, 
I think it's pretty much a foregone conclusion that uh, the DH will be coming in 2021 or 2022, um, which my friend Jason Collette actually uh, uh, predicted a couple of years ago. So um, kudos to him. But like, that's where Seth Beer is. Now, I'm going to segue this into into something. So last year, I wrote up Seth Beer when he played for the um, um, Jackson Generals, which is uh, the Diamondbacks double-A affiliate after he got traded from Houston, okay? So I got challenged by one of the Prospect Live writers, uh, Ralph uh, Lifshitz, Mm -hmm. um, to comp Seth to an actual beer. And honestly, it's really the greatest thing I've ever written. (laughs) So I'm going to share this, okay? You should send send me this link. I will put it in the the show notes, dude. Okay, awesome. It's phenomenal. Seth beer isn't a craft offering made by one of your favorite local breweries or one of the bigger microbreweries like San Diego's Ballast Point, which, by the way, I was drinking when I was writing this, uh, nice. which is a I personal like stuff. favorite of mine. I like this stuff, man. I got some in the fridge. Yeah. yeah. Sculpin. Seth, Seth would be a beer we drank in college. <laughs> oh, no. not as one as cheap as Natty Light, Light or as well-known as Bud Heavy. His player <laughs> profile is a throwback which disappeared for some time and is making a comeback because of its uniqueness. Okay. And just to kind of explain the uniqueness, um, beer is one of those guys that's going to hit for average and hit for power. Okay. Um, And we don't see that anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, So, um, uh, and and so in other words, Seth comps favorably to Paps Blue Ribbon. Oh no. (laughs) A beer, which is. I thought you would at least go like Miller High Life. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, no. When you're talking about but like rare. He disappeared from the mainstream and then reemerged in the last 10 to 15 years as a better tasting alternative to grittier beers. <laughs> okay, it became it came, became the yuppies beer. And yeah. so like I kind of see Seth Beer being that. And I'm really hoping that when I tweeted this out and I tweeted this whole thing out that Seth Beer somehow got it. <laughs> um, and if I ever get a chance to interview <laughs> Seth Beer, this is definitely coming up. Um, uh, so if I stuff, end man. up getting hit by a bat, you'll know why. Because <laughs> yeah. I comped a man to a Paps Blue Ribbon stuff. that I actually do like as a hitter. That's good stuff, man. That's awesome. Yeah, you have to send me that link uh, through Twitter and let me let me add that to the show notes. That is phenomenal. Um, Thank you. All right. All right. So the last uh, last topic we have here with first base so are are, are any of these players worth grabbing right now in dynasty for this season or do you want to just wait on the next crop you know your andrew vaughn your michael toglia etc yeah my my you know andrew vaughn's a must grab in dynasty he's he's not going to be up next year but uh uh like i said when we talked about adlay he was the he was that other guy. He was one, two as the college hitters. And, uh, you know, he can play first base. He's a good defensive player. So, like, there's no issue with him being a DH only type. Um, uh, he's short, actually. He's like six foot, which is unusual for a first baseman. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the sweetest swings you'll see knows how to adjust the swing to get loft, knows how to shoot the ball through a gap. Once again, somebody you don't normally see in this in this day and age. Uh, so, like, he, he's a guy I, I like a lot. As for the other dude, the Rockies first baseman, um, <laughs> Taglia, I'm probably the guy that's uh, the least on him among among fantasy prospect writers. Um, I just didn't uh, I didn't get to see UCLA that much, but I, you know, I rely on a lot of my contacts, and you have contacts, scouting contacts that you like more than others because like you see the game the same way and kind of stuff and you know how they see it. And so like one of my favorite scouting contacts, who's a good personal friend of mine, uh, had Taglia for three games and just had an awful report on him, uh, and was not really high on him. And so like, that's kind of where I, I, I stand with him. Um, actually the first base class after, uh, we have him ranked at HQ, Vaughn, Mount, Mountcastle, White, uh, Tristan Cassis, who I'm also kind of the low guy on, but he's he's probably a top, he's definitely a top 100 guy right now. Uh, Lewin Diaz for the Marlins is a very surprising guy. He got acquired in the, twi- uh, the Twins trade. 
uh, for Sergio Romo. Uh, very surprising guy. That guy could hit for average in power. So if you're looking for a sleeper, it might be Lewin Diaz. Interesting. Okay. So I want to ask you, because you keep comparing Vaughn and, and Adley, who would you have taken? At oh, I would have taken, I would take the catcher. Really? Yeah. I, I And that's, Man. that's where the rarity is. Uh, I think that he is that good. Okay. Oh, yeah. Like, I was, like, I was you know, all about man, like, just like on, he is, you know, you have a generational talent and catcher every decade, you know, every, every other decade, maybe Buster Posey was the last guy like this guy. And Buster Posey's a borderline Hall of Famer right now if he could have right. stayed healthy. You know, it would have been a surefire Hall of Famer if he was uh, if he was healthy the whole time. Right. And really, really, yeah. Buster Posey's probably a Hall of Famer. Let's, yeah, let's I, 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 don't I, I would think, think so. Yeah. Not at this point. Yeah. But uh, fair enough. I, I was I was in the camp of like, uh, catchers just don't produce. Like, this is not that position that matters as much. Orioles need so much more go after somebody besides a catcher, but I, you know, I see why catchers matter, but I also was just like, Oh man, there's so many more positions that could be more impactful. Yeah. The Orioles are desperate. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Whatever. So that wraps us up for first base. Let's head into second base here. Yeah. Uh, so we got, we got Gavin Lux. Uh, we got Carter key boom. They're the major prospects at the position. They've, they've already played a little bit. Um, so what what's in store for them for this year? What do you well, see coming out of them? Lux Lux is probably locked in as a regular player with the yeah. uh, with the Dodgers. So, um, so that's good for fantasy owners. Now, uh, I, I I mean we're talking about a guy that that's uh, all fields hitter. Um, I, I believe that he will hit for power. The one thing that's missing that most of our middle infielders have right now is you know that plus speed. Uh, so I think some people are valuing him a little more, thinking that he might be, you know, stealing double-digit bases and stuff. And I just kind of don't see that with him. Um, Carter Keeboom, that's another guy I'm, I'm lower than other people, but, like, I'm not as low as people think I am. Uh, my thing with Keeboom is I don't think he has any over, you know, any any substantial over-the-fence um, over power. So, like, to me, he's a guy that might be in – uh, I played Otanu uh, from Fangraphs for a few years, and uh, he would be like one of those perfect guys for that who just mashed a bunch of doubles and, and you know, I, I always talk about Alex Gordon winning me championships in the early um, teens because he that's what he did. He hit for extra base hits and just coupled them and coupled them and coupled them. But like an accounting stat league, not, not a points league, a guy like uh, – Guy like Keyboom's a little probably overvalued right now. Yeah, what do you think on these guys, Joe? You have any input on them? I mean, I I, I agree with Chris here. It you know, Lux has got the you know, he's got the starting job pretty much locked up. He had the script pretty bad in the spring to lose it, it feels like. Um Keyboom is is gonna have to work his way back up. I I don't think he's starting the, the year. Doesn't sound like he will. Um no. You know, he, he he came in. It was didn't have the greatest of of year in the in the limited time he played last year, um, and so you you do worry about that. But uh, you know, I honestly think people are overrating both of these guys because people just go bonkers for prospects. You know, that's just what it is. So yeah, uh, you know, yeah. everybody wants the next Mike Trout and Acuna and etc. You know, guys, ninety percent of these guys, if not more, are not. And you were close to these guys. <laughs> You'll find the better ones all the waiver wire later in the year. I guarantee yeah. it. You didn't even think about, but moving all on. Right. <laughs> so a couple more names we got here. Uh, Videl Brujan, I believe is how you pronounce it. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, yeah. Matt, Madrigal. Um, they're basically the next up behind uh, Lux and, and Keyboom. So who is the best prospect fantasy wise out of all four of these guys 2020 impact of anybody in this rookie class um i'm i'm putting my bet on nick madrigal um mm. that's every position i wow. think that he 
Oh, okay. He is going to hit for high average because he he has an elite contact rate. Uh, he barely strikes out. Uh, when you you know I don't know if you guys have the stats right there, but like he barely strikes out. Uh, he is like what everybody wished David Eckstein was. Um, the dude has speed, which Eckstein never really had. Uh, the dude is impossible of, to strike out. I watched uh, Marlins prospect Sixto Sanchez throw some of the nastiest pitches I've ever seen trying to strike him out. And this dude got contact every time. Wow. Um, mm. The thing is, is like his upside is about what, what I'm kind of expecting this year. He's kind of a $20 player. He might get up to like maybe 22, 23 in his career. Uh, once the speed starts going, he'll turn into a, like a better David Eckstein. Um, higher average, uh, won't walk that much. Uh, we'll rely on him making contact and hopefully making enough contact that he gets it over the infielders and, and all that, uh, the power's just not there. So, um, you know, and I, I'm kind of on an Island saying that he's the best. Uh, I think everybody agrees that he'll be very valuable this year when he comes up. But I think, uh, you know, for value purposes, I think like this is the dude that's going to be like, this is what he's going to be for the next, uh, hopefully 10 years. If he can keep his legs, uh, as, as for Brujan, uh, I, before we got on, I wrote about, I read about, I read what I wrote, um, in one of our books this year about him. And every time I go by that, I just cringe because I like overstated his power. Um, this guy is gonna is is a soft soft contact guy, um, and when I say that, he might barrel the ball, but he's not not hitting it over the fence. Um, he's five nine, probably one hundred fifty pounds, soaking wet. Um, his thing is he has elite speed, where Nick Magical only has plus speed, uh, but his contact rate is kind of you know just kind of a plus contact rate. Um, uh, doesn't won't walk that much, you know, kind of same problems. But like, this is the guy. If Magical can steal 20, 30 bases, Brujan's the guy that could steal 40, 50 bases. Um, and that and that's kind of the hitter you're looking back. He's kind of like a throwback. Um, you know, um, I can't really think of a good comp, but like, that's what I expect from him. Other than that, like the second baseman, I had to write this up for HQ are kind of dreadful until you get to like the lower minors. Um, so like, there's not really anybody that really sticks out beyond those guys. It honestly sounds like to me, like in fantasy leagues, like unless you're just desperate for steals, like you just kind of want to avoid those two. Like, I mean, yeah. they're not going to be, you know, they're not going to be the complete players. They're not going to be the five tool players that we're looking for at this point And which or even four tool guys, you know, just that we see all of them. We covet. You know, and, and you know, yeah. all these prospects, we just think that, oh, they're going to come up and be just everybody, right? So, I don't know. I I, th I think from everything you're telling me and from what I'm looking at at the stats right now on fan graphs, like, I just kind of want to go, eh, Yeah, and there's find people that believe that else. Magical and Brujan are going to develop more power than I think, than, than I think. Um, but, like, uh, and they're also thinking, okay, Juice Ball is going to take over and, uh, their contact is, you know, that they have good uh, contact skills, good good hitting approaches, and that kind of thing. I just don't see it. They're tiny guys. Yeah, They're I mean, really we've tiny. seen it though. I mean, like, I look, I, I don't think it can't happen, but I, I can see where, you know, I, I can agree with you where like it's doubtful to happen, right? You know, you yeah. see guys like Francisco Lindor and Jose Ramirez. You know, those guys, right? They're they built just, differently. But they also weren't power hitters in the minors. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like, they blew up, especially Lindor. It was like, and Lindor came up and everybody's like, ah, oh, he's like a 15, yeah. 15 home run guy. And all of a sudden, he's hitting 30. And you're like, what, but, but what happened? What we didn't see with them and what we can see now, if, like, you know, I'm going to comp one of my um, competitors, Rotowire has a lot of sure. hard hit data. Um, but, like, we have a hard hit data now with these guys coming up. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just tell you, Nick Madrigal is, and I think, I think James Anderson at Rotowire actually posted it. I'm not sure. Um, but like his contact rates, uh, his hard contact rate is not that high. Okay. He serves balls to different parts of the field. And that's why I don't believe his power will ever come. Uh, Brujan hits the ball maybe a little harder, but 
he's a switch hitter from the right side of the plate. I think he's awful. I don't think he can barrel balls from the right side of the plate. Yeah, I so mean, like, I, I'm looking at fan graphs, and you know, you get minus school worth of data as compared to the the major league guy. So, yeah, I might have to subscribe to some other sites to to get the better data. Well, for if these you're guys. looking if you're looking at the board at fan graphs to mm-hmm. plug them because I'm plugging every all my competitors tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, the board has a lot of good information on, you know, pitching spin rates, that kind of thing. Yep. There's some hitter, there's some hitter analytics on there that there is don't have. So I I wouldn't crush them completely. Uh, and also, you know, um, Eric Logan Hagen's a friend and, uh, Oh no, we love this site. We use it all the time. I just, it doesn't have the hard hit rates and stuff. So yeah, if I need that information, which would be awesome to have, because I use it for a lot of the major league you know, analysis we do is like hard hit rates, soft hit rates and stuff like that and pull rates. And I do the same thing, yeah. AJ, you know, I do that. Um, it'd be great to have this for, I didn't know it was out there. I use so, so like a company called baseball info solutions. Mm-hmm. Um, basically they have people in, uh, in uh, wherever in Pennsylvania they're located yep. that watch these games and basically rank the hits, um, the contact that's made, the type of contact that's made. And so that's how they create the hard hit rates. They're not doing it through uh, radar like everybody else um, because the radar in the minor leagues isn't available to the public. Um, They're owned by the minor league, uh, by the major league uh, teams, and they don't share that information. Interesting. Interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. Did not know that. All right, well, let's keep moving on here, man. Uh, Let's move on here to some third base. So, you know, it seems like we're kind of a couple of years away from the next, like, major crop of third basemen. You know, we've got a, a slew of really good third, ba- third basemen in the majors right now. And, you know, we've seen the wave before with shortstop and second base that sucked. And now we're, you know, we're seeing those guys come in. And now we're seeing third, you know, third base was stacked and still stacked. And we're waiting for the next crop to come in. It seems like outside of Alex Broom, you know, unless I'm totally forgetting somebody, like, is there really anybody that's going to make an impact this year? Uh, the know? only guy that I see making a big impact is probably, uh, and and I really don't think it's going to be a huge fantasy impact, but he'll have a regular job pretty soon, is Key Brian Hayes of the um, All right. pi- Pirates. Um, but we're talking about a guy that doesn't hit for power. Again, we're, we're fantasy baseball people. Sorry, man. You don't you don't hit for home runs and don't steal. You don't, you don't matter. <laughs> bases and you just don't matter, especially at third base. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah. Um, we don't apologize on this show. Um, other names. <laughs> yeah. Not too much. <laughs> Abraham Toro is an interesting guy with the Astros. He might yeah. end up being a first baseman. Um, that that that's kind of a guy that I really like as somebody down the road, but I, I have a feeling that he's going to get some playing time this year, um, just because their depth is not as strong as it's been in years past. Uh, so, um, so yeah, hopefully he can he can get some at bats and maybe give you some value. Another guy for this year who will be getting value at second base is Sheldon Noose, Noosey, hmm. who's uh, Oakland A's. Yep. Um, I hear that he might have the inside track uh, at the regular playing time at second. Um, they're they're kind of down on Barreto, and you know we don't know what uh, uh, Mateo is ever going to do. Jorge or um, yeah, is it Jorge? Yeah, Jorge Mateo. Um, we just don't know what kind of pros- what kind of hitter he's going to be. So uh, I could see him getting value maybe as a dual position guy this year, but. Really, truly, if you're looking for rookies this year at third base, you need to look elsewhere. You need to find, you need to find one of the established guys. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, so, since you can't look at the guys for for this year, you know, prospect wise, you know, it's just kind of not going to happen. It feels like. Let's just look slightly ahead. Nolan Gorman, okay. Nolan Jones, Josh Jang. Those guys, you know, who do you like the most out of that group? Um, who I, I maybe it's somebody I didn't mention, know, I, and, and, that, and that's totally fair. Yeah, I, I've always been higher on people on Nolan Jones than other people. I know okay. he strikes out a lot, but like 
Uh, he hits when he gets a hold of the ball, he hits the snot out of it, and he's strong enough to let it go out. I, I really don't. I don't know. I really think that Nolan Gorman's going to have trouble when he, get, you know, against upper division pitching. I don't think he sees breaking pitches that well. Uh, so, um, you know, he has more power than all of them, but like, that's a big equation uh, is being able to barrel pitches, especially bad breaking pitches. And if you can't read the breaking pitch, you can't barrel the bad breaking pitch. Uh, wasn't really the highest on Josh Jung. He has his, uh, he has his people. Um, just kind of throwing out some names, maybe, you know, for, for fantasy. I think that uh, right now the Mets' Mark Vientos is very underrated. Um, you know, even even in his own organization, everybody's going to be talking about Brett Batty. And I'm just going to say Vientos is probably the better fantasy prospect. Mm. Uh, uh, Vientos probably moves off of third base at some point. Um, but still, I mean, like, to me, he's the better prospect. Uh and then uh, another surprise guy that I like is uh, Cody uh, Cody House from L.A., the Dodgers. Um, uh, they drafted him in college, uh, late first rounder. Uh, I mean, nothing really too special, but, like, he does a lot of things well, and I always like guys that do a lot of things well. Good stuff. Good stuff, man. All right. So let's skip into the short stop position here so uh nico horner is a guy just like lux and and kiboom who who got a little bit of a touch of playing time last year i mean how good is he i mean it it seems he a little doubtful he'll start the season with the cubs but what can we expect well i think that he um he's like maybe a year behind Lux really in development. Um, I actually think he's a better uh, line drive hitter than, than Lux is. Uh, the ball just comes screaming off the bat, but a lot of times it comes with top spin. So the loft is not really there for him to hit it over the fence right now. Uh, I think this is a huge development year for him. He missed time last year. I can see him up. I think I ranked him. Um, kind of in my top 20 of guys uh, with rookie impacts, but like it really drops off after 12. So, um, you know, I could see him being like a four or $5 player um, towards the end of the year uh, with, you know, uh, another guy that, you know, in, in five on five leagues that you're um, probably struggling with average. He's kind of a rookie that might hit for more average uh, than, than you'll normally expect. But like, we like the line drive rate. Um, we like his ability to use the gaps. It's just a matter of uh, learning to, you know, slug the ball out of the ballpark. Uh, he could also end up in the outfield too. He's a very athletic, dude. So. Oh, we know that right. like to move players around too. So. Yeah. Yep. So, obviously, Wander Franco, he's the 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 consensus number one on on most charts out there. I mean, how good is this guy? Is is he going to live up to this hype? Um, you know, is he already living up to it? And, and when can we realistically expect him to get the call to the bigs? So Wander hasn't Wander hasn't figured out how to hit the ball in the air consistently yet. Um, but even with that said, he is he's just scolding the competition. He's going to scold uh, the upper levels too. He. Uh, is a lot like Vlad Guerrero Jr., but now we're talking about a dude that's uh, doing it from both sides. So um, the thing is, the power is hopefully going to come. Uh, he's a sturdy guy who's powerful. Um, I don't know if he sticks at shortstop long term, uh, but like if he's been if he hits the way I think he'll hit this year, he'll be up in the big leagues in the second half, and that's even that's saying a lot because the Rays don't rush guys, but they pretty much rushed him because uh, he's that good. They're not rushing. I shouldn't say they're not rushing. He's showing the ability to dominate uh, leagues with the skills to perform at the next level, the underlying skills. So, like, this guy's moving fast. And uh, I could see him being in the in the big leagues in July or August, especially if, uh, if the Rays need him, really. I mean, the Rays uh, use a lot of different parts to get through the season and uh, – yeah, uh, to have this guy in their pocket who's just a teenager. I mean, it's it's going to be pretty crazy. 
Damn. Interesting. That uh, you are one of the first people I've, or one of the first sources I've heard, seen, read anything that has seen him come up this year. Everything I read is like next year. I mean, we've seen it happen though. I mean, Soto and and all these guys. Yeah. I mean, they all came up like in their eighteen, nineteen year old year, and they crush. I mean, like if you've got the skills, you've got the skills. I mean, and and I'm. It's just people. Uh, people believe. See, here's the thing. This is this is where I've been around ten years, and um, you know, a lot of my competition's guessing, to be honest, with this kind of stuff, because they see the track record of the Rays, right? And the Rays take it one season at a time, one level at a time, and that's about it. But if you look at what this kid has done, I mean, he was in high A, and 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 in a really difficult league, making it look easy at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I really think that uh, he's odds on being a double A uh, to start the year. Um, that's my prediction. That's... If I'm right about that, I... I'm right about the second part. Look, I, I like you. I, I trust your opinion. I also know that I follow the AL East big time, and I kind of subscribe to the fact that the Rays just slow roll everything. So it is tough to it is tough to make mm-hmm. a prediction on him coming up this year, but I applaud you for making the you know for yeah. going out there and saying if he's, he's going to come up a, this year. He's in I, double A to start the year. Um, I will. We're going to bet on this. <laughs> if he starts in double A, he has to start in double A. Okay, and he doesn't make it to the major leagues. I owe you a six pack of your Georgia beer of your choosing. Okay. And Georgia. I'm not in Georgia. I'm in Maryland. Leagues, <laughs> I will send you, you send me six, six, uh, a six pack of, uh, of a uh, Baltimore area. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Beer. Good, good, good bet. Oh, man. I'm see? down. All right. All right. We, we can, we can go for but that. He has to start in double A. If he starts in high A, the bet's off. All right. We can go for that. We can go for that. All right, well, speaking of beer and bets, um, I'm going to take a Seth beer break here and uh, crack open number crack two. Crack it open. All right. We got, so, uh, we got some starting the, pick, We got some outfielders, I mean. so Florida, Florida man, man Florida from man. Cigar City Brewing. Yeah. Uh, the, the Florida man has grown quite a reputation for himself. Uh, I guess – Mid to late last year, it was the big thing. Put your name into some website, and it'll say that you're now a Florida man who butt fucked an alligator and a <laughs> shopping cart in the middle of Walmart, and it was okay. I don't know, something like that. It was a big thing. <laughs> oh, no. So maybe that's where this stems from. Maybe not. But uh, Cigar City Brewing, I've seen a lot of their stuff out there. I just can't recall actually having it anytime recently. Sweet. So. I had to pick Didn't this Cigar up. Cigar City it's a... do the high lie beer. Do what now? What? Don't they do the high lie beer? Yes, they day? do. Yes, yes, they do. That's a phenomenal beer. So it is good I, stuff. I yeah, I have. I walk past it every time I'm in. You Christos. should get that. It's very good. I know. I need to. I'm like, yeah, uh, it might be better than the one I already, you have in your hand. Because I walk around and where they have it, I already have like three sixers well, in my you hand. Should go the opposite four. way next time. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I'll get it next time. All right, so, so since the, we're going to take a beer break, I'm doing a, a little favorite. I ripped the label off because I do that. Uh, Lot 9 uh, IPA from Evo. Good stuff. Lot 6. I'm halfway done with it. All right. <laughs> Alfielders. <laughs> <And> I... <laughs> yeah. Alfielders. Lot, lot 6. Uh, anyway, lot so number... I'm still I'm still on shortstop. Why don't you slow your roll there? Aren't you done? You got right. a ton of guys that oh, appear sorry. to be on the cusp of playing this season. Uh, we got Royce Lewis. We got CJ Abrams. We got Bobby Witt Jr. Uh, Marco Luciano. I mean, whoever whoever else you can think of that that you want to add to that list. I mean, who are your favorite targets here? And then, uh, my just- favorite target is uh, uh, Luciano. Um, Arizona uh, summer league basically uh, just absolutely dominated. He's the next. Uh, next guy that's going to come out of the uh come bursting on the scene this year the prospect ranks uh so like he's my guy um i don't know if lewis can hit right-handed pitching he had some uh 
some injury issues last year. I love the kid, by the way. Um, uh, really straight shooter too. I asked him during a, a scrum, a, a media scrum about uh, about his early season struggles, and he like totally deflected. And then I asked him a very specific question, and he just lit up. And um, you know, I think he realizes that his swing is is it's it has a lot of moving parts and. Uh, you know, his, his, his strength is going to be, he's, he's going to kill left-handed pitching. He is also going to hit the ball out of the ballpark and he's going to provide you some speed. Uh, so like the, you know, being able to hit right-handed hit pitching is going to, going to really affect whether he's going to be, you know, top few round player at projection or a, um, you know, mid round type, uh, type dude. So. All right, cool. That's all I got for shortstop. Now, now you can go into your right, outfield. So, so yeah, sorry, I thought you were done. I I, I dumped the gun. Uh, I you guys want to put it. the agenda together? Jesus. <laughs> shortstop was long. I thought you were done. Uh, all shortstop right. was long. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. All <laughs> right. So some outfielders here, man. So we already talked about Odell and Robert. Like we're not gonna go with there. So Dylan. Uh, Carlson and Drew Waters, you know, or any other of these outfield call ups that are going to happen this season. Like, I know you seem to be low on Odell and Robert, but can these guys be better or couldn't they even live up to their projections? Yeah, I don't know what the industry like. The industry is kind of like, I don't know, even, even our own baseball HQ is kind of like up and down about Dylan Carlson, whether he's a great player or a good player, but like everybody kind of agrees that like, he's one of those dudes that like roster him in dynasty roster him, you know, on the end of your bench in a redraft kind of thing. Like uh, this guy does a lot of good things and like, he's going to come on doing a lot of good things uh, uh, when he makes his debut. Uh, he only had 17, two at bats in triple a last year. Um, but combined with his double A stats, he just he dominated the competition. He slugged over 500. He was on base over uh, 36, 37 percent of the time between the two two leagues, and he he stole 20 bases. Uh, power is there to hit 25, 30 home runs, uh, uh, especially with this juice ball right now. Maybe in the future, 30, 35. Um, you know, he's probably the most polished of our outfielders this year uh even if he's a little his, his debut is going to be a little after roberts uh Interesting. so like i like him um i think that we're missing uh christian pache i think pache's the outfielder with the braves it's going to be up before uh first so um so yeah i i have pache um there but the thing with pache is he's he doesn't steal bases anymore. Uh, so like people have lost that and, you know, he's probably a 20, 25 home run hitter. So he's going to really have to have that average to, to carry his, uh, carry his tool set. Um, other than that outfield guys this year, um, I guess Nick Solik, Solik has a, has outfield eligibility right now. Um, yeah. He'll get plenty of playing time with the Rangers. Uh, long-term dynasty, I don't really care too much for him. Uh, you got Austin Hayes in Baltimore, guys. Um, I like him. I'm keeping him in my yeah, dynasty. Like oh, boy. Uh, I, think he'll, I think he'll have a lot of value this year. I think I have him uh, definitely in my top five of rookie impacts this year. Nice. Um, just because, you know, the opportunity is there, and he's not going to be held back, you know. He's a, he's a good uh, ball player, too, man. He's he is. solid, he dude. Really I is. like him a lot. When he's on the field, he performs, dude. And, and then there's there's some people that really believe in, uh, and this is a deeper dive for rookie, uh, Jared Oliva of uh, Pittsburgh. A lot of people believe that he's going to going to do it. I'm, I'm not really in that camp. Um, I don't know how he's going to hit advanced pitching, specifically velocity when he gets up. Uh, I think that there's some uh, some bat speed issues there. But but there's a lot of my fellow prospect writers that, that like him and have given me sound reasons to like him. Um, I just don't see it. Is he more? Is is he a guy that would maybe be somebody to come up 
this year, late this year, or like super yeah, early I next say, year? I mean, you, you see the situation in Pittsburgh pretty dire. Um, yeah. So, yeah. like, I could see him, you know, even doing like a Brian Reynolds thing and, you know, somehow finding a job at the beginning of the year and just carrying it type thing. But I don't think he's going to have that impact like uh, like Reynolds did. Um, All right. Um, uh, and, and just looking at this list further, I'm looking at our top 45 list, which I, I helped compile, but I didn't completely compile. I don't really see any other impacts for this year, uh, at outfielder. Seth so, Beer. Yeah. <laughs> Seth Beer, drink. No, that's good. Uh, yeah, he, he, no. he definitely, if he, if he feels it out there, he'd definitely be in Milwaukee's best. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Or worst. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I was with you, man. Like, when I was putting together these questions for the outfield, I was kind of like, there's a lot of guys on the list, obviously, because, you know, you have to have three outfielders and there's a lot of depth and things like that. But yeah, just nobody seemed to be like a, a, a game breaker. Like, it just didn't seem like anybody was like shooting off the page. It's so, and yeah. it seems like you agree. So, it, and you also, you also, there's, uh, I just thought of me, there's two Mariners prospects that you might have to watch this year for, um, 2020 impacts, uh, Kyle Lewis, mm. um, who used to be an explosive, uh, five tool athlete who severely hurt his knee and can't run anymore. Um, but like the dude has a lot of power. Um, yeah. I remember Kyle Lewis. There. And then, um, Jake Fraley is another guy. Uh, he's kind of, He's a guy that um, a lot of the fantasy prospect guys like better than the um, the scouts, um, okay. because uh, you know he does a little bit of everything. Um, scouts have a hard time seeing him as an everyday player going forward, but with the Mariners roster situation right now, sure, he's probably an everyday <laughs> player for them. So interesting, you know. It, weirdly enough, a little off topic. I I saw rumors today that. It's possible that Indians would sign Domingo Santana. Uh, what? It, I wonder what. Um, my first thought was like, what the hell is that gonna do to that outfield that already seemed kind of crowded? So like, I don't know if you have any thoughts about that, real quick. What on Cleveland? Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I have really a thought on that. Um, I. So they have I really Framil like Reyes. Reyes. Like I feel like he I was going to really be the like guy, him. and I think that this year he's really going to like shine. He's uh, he's a darling of the Baseball HQ projection system right now. Um, I love it, and, but yeah. He, but the thing is, is like uh, you you would figure Mercado's in center field. Um, Zimmer's coming back from injury, but that's really just like two spots. Who's the third outfielder there? <sighs> And, but that's where, like, if they go and reach for Santana, like, that's what scares me. Because, like, if they go sign a Santana, like, maybe it's because they don't think Fran Mill can be a, a full-time player. Now nah, they, they think he's a full-time player. I think I it's hope so, more, man. I hope so. They just don't have enough outfielders right now. I'm getting I'm I'm getting phenomenal offers for him in my dynasty league, but I'm not I'm not budging. Not does Who, not Domingo like is, or Fran Mill. Fran Mill. I'm not getting offers that's like, oh my gosh, it'd be totally crazy to pass up. It's like close, you know. It's like, uh, all right, but I'm not, I'm not budging yet. Don't budge. If I get something stupid my way, I'll be like, have him, bye. <laughs> but um, it's like, you know, dudes like Loriano, who I kind of feel like is a better overall player and a safer player, but I feel like Reyes has a higher ceiling, so I'm, I'm holding steady. Yeah. So that's kind of where sense. I'm at with it. So, all right, let's move on to some starting pitching. I just want to get your thought on that. All right, starting pitching. There's a lot of dudes, man. I feel like this is the year where we're going to see tons and tons of, like, elite pitching prospects come up. It just feels like it. We've got Mackenzie Gore, Forrest Whitley, two Tigers, right? Matt Manning, Casey Mize. I mean, how good are these guys? Let's start with Gore, right? Um, Gore is, uh, he's a, he's a dude that just, uh, repeats his delivery. He has, uh, all his pitches are above average or better. Um, I mean, it looks pretty. It, it's, it's not your atypical pretty, uh, delivery from the left side, but like, it's just so smooth. Uh, uh, it, his big thing is he still needs to work on commanding his fastball to the four quadrants of the strike zone. Uh, but once he, once he gets that, I mean, we're looking at number one, number two starter upside. Uh, 
I could see him being up this year. The Padres are not shy about bringing their rookie pitchers up. Uh, no. Nope. So, uh, I mean, if he's one of the best five to leave camp, he's going to be on that, that roster. Um, I just don't believe he'll leave camp with him, but I think he's, he's a guy that could be up any month. I mean, trying to predict it's going to be hard, but like, I could see him up in May. I could see him up in June. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. What yeah. What about Forrest Whitley, the second guy on, on this list here that I had? Yeah, Whitley had a really bad year last year. Um, yes, he did. <laughs> Whit- <laughs> Whitley, yeah. of all the pitchers uh, um, that we're going to talk about tonight and all the pitchers that we're not going to talk about tonight, uh, Whitley has the best overall stuff. Um I heard that he had some – I know he had some injury concerns. I know he had a tired shoulder at one point. I heard that uh, he also may have tried to pitch through this stuff, and that was the reason why the stats were so bad. Um, I had a chance in the fall league to see him, and I guessed the wrong day that he was pitching. Uh, so that kind of stunk. Uh, I did the same thing with Spencer Tower to the Phillies. I guessed the wrong day. Um, <laughs> but um, But with Whitley, like – like he was, he could have come up in the World Series if they needed him. Like they were that high on him, you know, being in their pen. Like the stuff is that good that the dude barely pitched last year and they were going to throw him in the World Series roster. Wow. Um, but yeah, he is the definite, like, if it all comes together, he's the definite potential Hall of Famer of this group. Um, but the thing is, is there's a lot more questions with him compared to guys like Mackenzie Gore and. A uh, guy I really like, Jesus uh, Lazard, uh, Lazardo uh, of yeah. Oakland. Well, let's talk about him, man. What, what do you think? Oh, let's talk about him. Yeah, so Jesus is is a three pitch pitcher who who got to see a lot of uh, uh, pen action in September and recovered from Tommy John. Uh, I remember the day that he got traded. Um, one of my fellow prospect writers, Eric Loganhagen, was like, "Oh my God, this guy's going to be really good." Um, my scouting contacts were saying the same exact thing. Uh, and he just kind of ballooned because he had in one of those guys that had command already, it was just about maturating his stuff. And I really think like this year of all the pitchers that are going to be up, he has the best potential of being a, um, a positive fantasy prospect because you guys know with rookie pitching, it, it's like a crapshoot. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, unless you're Chris Paddock and decide to just destroy and then, you know, go out with injury and destroy teams that drafted you yeah. uh, or picked you up. But, yeah, I love Luzardo. I think I think he's an absolute, uh, you know, must-have this year. Uh, yeah. And Howard, I, I, I'm glad you mentioned him. I did want to bring him up a little bit and just get your general thoughts. I and mean, it sounds like you saw him on a on a down day. So I I, I didn't see Spencer Howard actually. I, oh, I just, you didn't? Okay. Yeah, I missed him. Um, mm. So like in the Arizona Fall League, you you know you don't always get even the scouts don't get the pitchers until they actually throw sometimes. Got it. Uh, so I went over to Peoria and he was playing like right next to the hotel I was staying at uh in uh scottsdale um i think at salt river so like that was bad but like um my my editor um brent hershey likes him a lot um he he kind of had a minor shoulder sprain last year that's why he was in the fall league uh four pitch mix uh swing and miss fastball mid 90s uh the secondaries flash plus uh the dia his change up is uh is a major league pitch. Uh, he has an unorthodox delivery. He's kind of cross-armed, uh, something that we don't normally see with starters, but it's very effective. Wait, yeah. Um, and he'll he'll probably be a solid like two three starter at project at, at uh, maturity, I should say. Yeah, but yeah, probably but I, not up this year. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen a lot a lot of talk with him involved in potential trades and obviously they the phillies don't want to give him up because they don't have really, anything else i i yeah i know it's it's him and bomb and that's that's it yep. um you know they are they already gave up uh six though and got uh real muto back which I, i'm okay with i mean i yeah. i did like 
Sanchez. I loved his his upside, but yeah, Real Muta was a stud for us last year and should still be for years to come. So, yep. Um. Okay. Cool. Well, good to good to know on on Howard. Get get a little more uh, additional insight on on him. So to close out the relievers here, uh, or the pitchers here, I want to talk a little bit of relievers. So, I, and, <laughs> and I know it's hard to predict, but and if you got nothing, man, like honestly, not a big deal. Any relievers though that we should be looking at that could possibly jump up midway through the season and take the closer role. I know it doesn't happen very often, but just in case. Well, it depends how uh, San Diego does this year. Um, if San Diego isn't as strong as people think they may be, um, they might trade their closer, uh, Kirby Gates. And uh, next man up on that is Andros, Andres, uh, Andres Muno. M- uh, God, my sorry. I've been drinking too much. <laughs> uh, Andres Muno, Munoz. Uh, um, uh, right-handed pitcher. He he's probably the best chance at, at getting closer type looks. Um, another guy, you know, depending on how the the Indians do, uh, they have two guys. They have uh, James Carnage uh, Carnage and uh, Emmanuel Class Class, uh, and both of those guys are are high end relievers. Uh, my issue with Karnin Karnin is that he is um, the problem with him is his command is awful, but his stuff is electric, like two plus plus pitches, and uh, when they're on, they're absolutely dominant. Um, but really, truly, in class is really a two pitch pitcher as well. Just the stuff's not as good, but the command's much better. So. If something were to happen to Brad Hand or they end up trading him, those are two guys that could see closer closer um uh closer roles by the end of the year. Cool. Yeah, it, it, it it's hard to predict the the relievers coming up and taking the closer role. I know. I, I yeah, know. I mean look I, I mean I look at Nick Anderson dark. last year. Nick I Anderson know. was like traded for a backup uh minor league infielder. And ended up being like one of the most dominant relief pitchers in all of baseball. So, and possible closer for the Rays this year. Yeah, and he's shooting at the boards now, man. Uh, yeah, that that's where drafting in January helps out if you took him late. Um, all right, that's all we've got for the positions. We've got a, a couple more questions here. Okay. Just to just to close out the show to finish off some draft strategy. Uh so fire away, AJ. All right. So we we talked about Adele, we talked about Robert Robert. I mean, who would you draft in redraft leagues this year? Um, you know, I kind of talked about Nick Madrigal earlier. I think that mm-hmm. he's he's kind of my top choice uh in non points leagues and points leagues. It may actually be someone like Austin Hayes. Um, you know, I don't think this rookie <laughs> class is going to be as uh, shiny as the last few. So, um, you know, you're not going to get as big a value with guys. Um, so, like, I w- if I ranked him, I would go Magical and then Robert because Robert's still in base ability. And then, uh, you know, there's there's some other guys. Hayes, I'm probably missing somebody right now. I think that Solik can be a uh, Nick Solik can be a very uh, productive guy this year, um, given that the Rangers need him to play somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a really dry class this year, to be honest. Um, and and then you know you got the solidness of Evan White, and uh, and yeah, um, but I would I would probably, like I said at the opening, I'd probably stay away from Joe Adele. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It, I love the fact that you keep hyping on Austin Hayes. And I remember pulling these notes over from last year. And for this next question, last year you mentioned Austin Hayes, and I snagged him in my Dynasty League and kept him all year, and I'm loving it. Uh, so, you know, the, there's leagues where, like mine, right? It's it's called a Dynasty League. I'm doing air quotes. Uh, but it's really like a it, it's really like a draft and keep league where we do mm-hmm. we draft we keep twenty five every year and then we redraft the rest right 
but we also have first year player drafts. So all these like high quality, you know, first round draft picks, you know, the Joe Adele's, they're gone. Those guys are yeah. gone. But there are people that slip through the cracks. Who are some of these players that are slipping through the cracks that this year can make a massive impact? And like I said, last year you mentioned Austin Hayes, and he didn't make a massive impact because he was injured, but I think he will this year, so he doesn't count. But he, uh, I think that was a great one, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I think people are sleeping on uh, on Brendan McKay, left-handed pitcher for the Rays, because he didn't really look so swell last year. Uh, I think that he's kind of a sleeper that that nobody's really kind of paying attention to right now. Uh, I like uh, Mauricio Dubon, who's a Giants, probably going to be their starting second baseman this year. Uh, very solid prospect. He's not going to be a great guy, but like he's a guy that's going to steal you bases, make contact. Um, get you average walk some, I mean, he is a little aggressive at the plate, but, uh, he's a guy that could sleep a bit. Um, uh, that's not really well known, uh, beyond certain circles, really. Uh, I, I kind of mentioned him when we were talking about second basements, but Jorge, uh, Mateo, nobody really knows what to make of him right now. He's an Oakland A's guy that has a good year and then struggles and then has a good year and struggles. Well, he just came off a really good year in triple A. But the A's never called him up, so that's kind of, you know, a little bit of a question mark there. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm really grasping for straws with this the, this question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all good, man. Guys, it's a hard really, one. Really, truly, I just, I, I just, you know, I look at the like looking at the Orioles, like you know, use Neil uh, Diaz. I, I don't want to recommend him. I mean, I think he'll be up. I think he'll get a lot of playing time. He's probably, time. honestly, he's probably owned in most dynasty leagues at some point. He is yeah. in mine. So that, that's where I struggle, where it's just like, you know, Austin Hayes was exactly what we needed for this. Like, he was a guy who yeah, never was drafted. He wasn't a high draft pick. And yeah. he just was a producer. And then, you know, came, you know, got a chance late last year. And then, or late the year before, was solid. And then was like a good producer this year once he finally got or last year. I found one. Chance. So, I yeah. found one. Sure. It took me this whole time and I found one. Uh, <laughs> Glad I can talk. We're going to go to the Los Angeles Angels. We're going to go to their baseball HQ third ranked prospect, Brandon Marsh. Um, people have been dropping him in leagues from what I saw on, uh, you know, on the fan tracks. Uh, draft percentage they're not drafting him as much uh Good. probably because he's not hitting for power yet but he's he's a guy that um you know kind of is in that Hayes situation people you know dude's been injured a bunch and you know when somebody's injured people start forgetting about you and, mm-hmm. and this is a guy that just smacks the ball all across the ballpark uh, uh the real question is whether his swing can can produce loft at a at a decent pace to make him valuable. Um, but he's like in the Arizona Fall League, he just absolutely demolished the ball every time I saw him. So uh, I like him a lot. And here's a here's a here's a catcher. Tyler Stevenson for the Reds. Um, you know, I could see him being up in the second half and uh kind of having an impact like Sean Murphy did. I love it. I'm writing that one down because uh because right. then you can have a cane to match your top hat to go with all the nuts. Right. There we go. <laughs> hey, I have. I win leagues. I, I win this league of having like a catcher every day who like produces. It's insane. I'll own like I mean, 40 roster spots. I don't care. I mean, you, I'll own if, three catchers. If you can have a guy that'll produce in a slot that's damn near worthless, then yeah. sure, it's yeah. good. It it helps your team. I never actually in a points league. I never spend. I never spend capital on catchers. It's not. I don't either. I, I literally don't either. Like no, no. as you can tell, like I got Ramos at twenty three. Right, that was like three years ago. Uh, and so actually, when I draft, yeah, no, twenty three. And then I've got two catchers now: Tom Murphy and Sean Murphy in round forty, which means they're free agents that I picked. Up a bunch of drunks, year. those Murphs. Yeah. 
so yeah, I I don't spend capital on catchers either. Um, I've got guys that literally like, I got a guy who has Buster Posey, and I'm like, you won't trade me for an up and coming catcher in Sean Murphy? And he's like, no. Nope. I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's why you don't win this. Game. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> so, all right, man. Uh, Chris, go ahead before we let you go. Uh, great show, by the way. I love it. I love Thank it every time. Um, let us know where everybody can let everybody know where they can find you uh, on the internet. So. All right. Well, you got a lot of things. You just asked me a lot. Um, Sorry. You can see me regularly at baseballhq.com. It's a subscription site. I'm also on Twitter, uh, Chris at C underscore blessing. Um, uh, Baseball HQ is going to have a podcast soon about prospects and i'm going to host that with brent hershey who's my editor nice um yeah excuse me so look for that in um march um and then you can find my work in ron chandler's baseball forecaster the minor league baseball analyst which are both uh, available in bookstores and on amazon or on baseballhq.com uh you can go to newsstands and get the lindy sports baseball 2020 preview um, I did the prospect thing. It's my only non-fantasy um, job I have, and it's the best job in the world because I don't have to report it to the IRS. Um, so, <laughs> and then uh, also on these stands, today, <laughs> well, it's under five hundred dollars. Yeah, five hundred dollars. So, I mean, uh, yeah, hey, it's actually under six hundred. Uh, by the way, it's actually okay. under six hundred. Well, yeah. yeah, one time, one time. It's right? it's my favorite. It's my favorite hit. It's uh, the best man. And then you, then you got USA Today Sports Weekly Fantasy Baseball Special Edition. I have two things in there. And then finally, uh, speaking of uh, Cigar City Beer, um, two weeks, Baseball HQ is going to be in Tampa, Florida, actually in St. Petersburg for nice. uh, First Pitch Florida, which is a, a fantasy sy- symposium, which we're going to have uh, the labor drafts this year uh, there. Right. And I will be there, and uh, there's still room available. If somebody, one of your listeners, is close to St. Petersburg or has a lot of money and can buy, you know, airfare this close to um, that event. Um, but it should be good. A lot of huge fantasy um, names are going to be there, like myself. Um, and um, and um, don't pat yourself on the back too much, bro. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny is like all all the people there. Like I'm like the low guy. I'll be honest, but. Um, I am one. I'd love to get in the labor draft, man. I, I want to get in the labor draft too. I, I guess I'm my goal this year is to somehow get on uh, the serious fantasy baseball channel just to, you know, somehow sneak my way on there. Um, because they'll be they'll be there reporting on the drafts. Um, but we're also going to a few games, and you know, you can sit with your favorite fantasy pro, um, fantasy guys at these games, you can befriend them. Our industry is so nice um, and so welcoming. So, like, if you're just a regular Joe like I was 10 years ago before I got started in this stuff, um, we just love everyone. So, Just like to talk sports, drink beer. Exactly, yep. dude. I love it. <laughs> Hi, man. Good stuff, Chris. Uh, we're going to close out the show. And uh, good for having glad, – glad to have you on. And uh, we'll definitely have to do it again. We'll – absolutely have you on midway through the year to discuss the first year players as much as we can cheers all right man cheers cheers buddy great show all right thanks for coming on all right joe you got anything else to ramble on i do man i I think that was a a nice full show we got nothing to add here uh if we did it'd probably ruin the show so we're just going to close it out if you're good with that see y'all later that'll work